A Man Called Raven, story by Richard Van Camp, pictures by George Littlechild. The two boys danced around madly, trying to corner the raven. They shouted at each other not to let it get away, and the raven gave off metal screeches and hissed at them. The boys had been hitting the bird with broken hockey sticks, and now its wing was dragging. It half skipped, half waddled behind a pile of boxes stashed in their neighbor's garage. Chris squinted, where is it? Where did it go? Toby answered, I don't know. It's going to be in that corner somewhere. Go find it. There was a big pause. I'm not going to go find it. Forget that. You go find it. No, sir. You go first. The raven used this moment of confusion to roar its way between the two boys and out into the driveway. Feeling the thunder of wings, the boys yelled and grabbed to each other. They spun around and the raven was gone. Standing in front of them, however, was a huge man and he was angry. You kids, he boomed, what were you doing to that raven? Chris started to edge away, pulling his brother by his shirt, but the man blocked them. We were trying to help it fly, Toby said. It was hurt and silence, the man roared. You lie. Do you know what you have done? Can't you see what a great crime you have committed? Hey, man, Chris started to take it easy. It was just a raven. Those things get into our garbage and they spread it all over the street. Enough, the man said. Where, who are your parents? Then the boys winced. They knew they were going to be in big trouble. The man towered above them. They knew they could not lie to him. He motioned for them to come forward out into the sunlight. Then it was Toby who finally answered. Our folks are Gwen and Ken Gray Eyes. We live three doors down. Bring me to them, the man said, and they led the stranger to their house. They walked in and called for their mom to call them downstairs. They ran up to their room, passing their mom on the way. She had soap suds on her hand and she asked who it was, but they did not answer. Instead, they hit their bunk beds and hoped there wouldn't be any punishment. After a while, there was a knock on the door, but the boys pretended to be asleep. Get up, you two, their mom called. I know you're awake. And then she told them to come downstairs. They were in deep trouble, she said, and she was very disappointed in them. Toby and Chris walked downstairs with their heads low and their knees weak. The man was there waiting for them. Sit down, their mother said. I want you to listen to this man. And then she walked off into the kitchen where their father sat. And they did not talk, but they listened to what the stranger had to say. He sat across from the two boys. He was smoking a pipe with tobacco and sipping on coffee. The boys looked at each other. Smoking wasn't usually allowed in their house. There was a long silence and the man looked at them. The boys noticed they had long black hair and huge eyes. He wore old clothes and he smelled of pine needles. Chris thought there was probably nothing that the man didn't see and Toby wondered if the man ever slept. The man took a long drag of his smoke and began to speak. You don't know this, but you were asking for a lot of trouble when you were beating up on that raven. Your parents told me that you've never gone out to be on the land. Well, maybe that explains your actions, but I wanna tell you a story about a man who liked to hurt ravens. This is a true story, so listen to it and take what you can. In my day, there was this man. He was old and he was wicked. He never smiled. He never said anything nice to anyone. The man paused to take another drag on his pipe and a sip of coffee. Then he said, well, he used to shoot arrows at ravens. One day he hit one of them. Now he wasn't trying to hunt them, to kill them, to eat them. He was just trying to hurt them. And he wasn't using the normal arrowheads. He was using blunts. And boys, you better believe that hurts. The raven couldn't fly and it couldn't do anything else either. So it started to follow the old man. Day and night, it followed him. The man couldn't run to his friends because he didn't have any. And the raven just followed him wherever he went. Pretty soon, he could no longer sleep because he knew the raven was always watching him. So one day... The man started to get funny thoughts and he climbed into a tree in this to sleep. The man just sat and waited for him on the ground. 
Well, that man, he slept for a little while, but then when he woke up, that raven was still there. After that, the man walked day and night and only stopped once in a while to sleep up in a tree. Soon, he started jumping from treetop to treetop just so he wouldn't have to see that raven on the ground. And then one day he was jumping, he slipped and he fell. But when he fell, he never hit the ground. When he fell, he started to change. And do you know what he turned into? <gasps> a raven, answered the boys. That's right, the man said. But do you know what? What? The boys asked. He was still just as mean as he always had been. The old man who became a raven flew back home so he could spy on all the people he used to know. He flew to his village and when he got there, he saw that there was a funeral. Do you know whose funeral that was? The old man's. Yes. And do you know who came to the funeral? No one, the boy said. Wrong, the man answered. Everyone. What, said Toby? And then Chris said, but I thought he, I thought you said, I thought nobody cared about him. Well, yes, the man continued. That's what the old man thought too. That's why he was so mean to everyone. And that's why I like to hurt ravens. But one day he saw the, all the people singing to him and he knew he had a place in the village like everyone else. And he knew he wasn't alone. He wanted to tell his people he was sorry, but he couldn't speak. He could only call out like the other ravens. And that's when the man who became a raven really started to change. And that's when he started to watch over all of his people. He watched over his people when they went to the lakes to hunt moose. And when they set out nets to catch the fish that were coming down the river. He watched over his people as they hunted above the tree line for caribou. Once there was an awful snowstorm and there was a whiteout and his people got separated from each other. One group made shelters and they were safe, but the other group started to wander in circles. So he called out to the people lost in the snowdrifts and they started to follow him. They followed him to the other group and they were saved. Raven saved them from freezing. Wow, said Chris. That's amazing, said Toby. Yes, the man said, and now you see why you must respect Raven. Yes, the boys answers. Their faces burned with shame when they remembered what they had done. Well, the man said, I think you've got the point. I had better go. So he put down his coffee cup and he stood up. Chris and Toby followed him to the door. They wanted him to stay and tell them more stories about animals and being an Indian living on the land. Mr. Toby said, did that man ever get to become human again? The man paused before going out the door. Sometimes when there was something the people were forgetting, he would change back, but not for too long. Oh, they said, looking at each other. And then the man was gone, leaving behind him the thunder of wings. That's the end.